Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and we're going to do the August the 3rd just for today in a meditation together. Hope you're having a wonderful morning. Let me get into that meditation. All right, trusting people. Many of us would have nowhere else to go if we could not have trusted NA groups and members. Basic text, page 84. Trusting people is a risk. Human beings are notoriously forgetful, unreliable, and imperfect. Most of us come from backgrounds where betrayal and insensitivity among friends were common occurrences. Even our most reliable friends weren't very reliable. By the time we arrive at the doors of N.A., most of us have hundreds of experiences bearing out our conviction that people are untrustworthy. Yet our recovery demands that we trust people. We are faced with this dilemma. People are not always trustworthy, yet we must trust them. How do we do that, given the evidence of our past? That's a good question. First, we remind ourselves that the rules of active addiction don't apply in recovery. Most of our fellow members are doing their level best to live by the spiritual principles we learn in the program. Second, we remind ourselves that we aren't 100% reliable either. We will surely disappoint someone in our lives, no matter how hard we try not to. Third, and most importantly, we realize that we need to trust our fellow members of N.A., our lives are at stake, and the only way we can stay clean is to trust these well-intentioned folks who, admittedly, aren't perfect. Just for today, I would trust my fellow members. Though certainly not perfect, they are my best hope. Let's take a moment of silence, followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. That's a wonderful meditation. It's very beautiful, in fact. Trusting people. And it is interesting because sometimes... I find myself still wanting to employ the tactics, the strategies, the way that I operated before I got to the program because that seemed to be a surefire, right? Being a con artist, manipulating people, it got what I wanted back then. But today, the consequences, it can still get the same, but the consequences are higher. And the reason why they're higher is because I'm aware of them. I feel them. I allow myself to process them. So a lie before I got clean does not have the same impact as a lie today. Now, it may actually in the physical world have the same impact. But what it did to me was limited by the barrier of my high. But when I remove that shield, I remove that smoke screen of getting high, right? Using mind and mood altering drugs to change my perception of reality. Now, when the perception is accurate, right? On point for the most part, right? I'm not high anymore. If I act the same way as I did pre-recovery, I'm going to feel a heavier consequence because now I am very much aware of what's going on. And that is so detrimental to a recovering individual to stop using but maintain the behavior. Literally, there have been people that have 
stop using, maintain the behavior, took a bullet behind it, or ended up taking their own lives behind it. And in some cases have taken the lives of other people. I think there was a shooting not too long ago at a recovery facility, right? So to think that I'm going to be able to do the same things that I did out there and work them in here in recovery is is not real. It's not realistic. I can do it because I have a free will, but it's not conducive to that to my recovery or anyone else's. And so here it is. Now we're talking about something negative, but let's talk about trusting people. I trusted people out there to an extent. I trusted that we would get high together. I trusted that whatever I came to you for, you were handing me what you said you were giving me. I jumped in cars. I stayed in hotels. I did things with people, not even in hotels, right? I did a lot of things that if the person had just decided, I'm going to really, and in some cases they really did harm me, but if they just decided I'm going to take her life or I'm going to tie her up, and I'm going to beat her badly, I would have been defenseless. I would have been defenseless. If I had been aware enough, because depending on my high would determine how conscious I was. <laughs> mm. If I had even been aware enough that they were about to hurt me, I more than likely I would not have been able to get away, right? So I trusted people, but it was one of those dark trusts, right? So I come into recovery and I don't trust anybody. I'm not trusting these people. They're an addict just like I was. I'm I'm not, no. I'm not trusting them. But we need to. And that's what I like about this particular sentence here, right? We will surely disappoint someone in our lives, no matter how hard we try not to, right? So I'm keeping it honest by saying, even I have let people down. So other people probably more than likely will also let me down occasionally, but that's not their intent because their intent is to recover just like mine, right? Third, and most importantly, we realize we need to trust our fellow members of NA. Our lives are at stake. And the only way we can stay clean is to trust these well-intentioned folks who admittedly aren't perfect. Well-intentioned. See, out there, the intentions were not well at all. Ill-intentioned, not well-intentioned. I'm dealing with a different ball of wax in re recovery. I should be, right? And if I am my own measuring stick, then there's a lot of room for other people to make mistakes and still be within the circle of people that I come to depend on and trust in for the purposes of recovery. Not everyone can come into my home, right? Uh, I don't get behind, get in the car with just anyone. I don't care if they're in recovery or not. I'm still going to be very selective about who I ride with. Because I don't have time for pullovers. I don't have time for driving without a license. I don't have time for the person that's uh, not insured. I definitely don't have time for drugs to be found in compartments that no one would have guessed just getting in your car, right? So I'm careful about a lot of things, but in the most general sense, I trust the fellow members of Narcotics Anonymous, right? And I know that I need them. So what about you? I've talked long enough about me. Where are you with this? 
trusting people? I would say probably, I'm such a statistical person, that's funny. The majority, let's just say the majority, because I can't get a, I'll give you an honest percentage, right? The majority of the people will say, yeah, I trust to an extent, just like I said, to an extent. And as long as that trust is enough to get you the help that you need, the ability for you to invest in a therapeutic value of one addict helping another is without parallel. If it's enough for you to be able to accomplish that at this stage of the game, it's probably enough. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you. I hope that you will have a beautiful day on purpose. I tend to. It's late. I can't believe it. I slept till seven o'clock. I cannot believe I overslept, but I feel so great for it. And I'm going to have the most wonderful day. You do the same on purpose.